Hello. In this video, we're going to provide a brief introduction to switching regulators. Switching regulators is a type of voltage regulator. And as any voltage regulator, its purpose is to provide a very stable DC output voltage from an unstable or an unregulated DC input voltage. Uh, there are two main different types of regulator circuits, linear regulators and switching regulators. Linear regulators are characterized because they typically include one or more active elements, uh, but the active element is operating in its linear region of operation. So it's always on, always consuming power, and therefore they tend to be less power efficient than the switching regulators. Switching regulators, on the other hand, they use active devices, but they switch them on and off, and so they're being switched from saturation to cutoff, uh, thus consuming less power than their linear counterparts. There are uh, three main categories or classification of switching regulators. There is the back regulator or back converter, which is a step-down type of regulator, meaning the output voltage is lower than the input voltage. Uh, the boost converter or boost regulator is a step-up regulator where the output voltage is higher than the input voltage uh, by virtue of some energy being stored in an energy storage element and released uh, later on. And uh, the inverting regulator or flyback converter is a regulator where the output is of inverse polarity from the input voltage. Um, I've represented here a back switching circuit. It's not yet a regulator because there's no feedback mechanism to provide the regulation, but it's going to allow us to see how a, a, a back, in this case, type of regulator will work. Notice that there is an unregulated input voltage V in. It's being run through a pass transistor. In this case, is uh, an NPN transistor, typically a power NPN, which is labeled as Q1. There is a diode D1. Um, and then there is an LC uh, filter, and the output is taken across the capacitor C. Uh, a clock signal is being applied at the base of Q1. And notice that when the clock goes high, the transistor turns on. Uh, the diode becomes reverse biased, and so basically there's no current flowing through it, so it acts as an open circuit. Um, and so energy is being stored in that uh, time circuit, in that LC circuit. When my clock goes down or becomes slow, my transistor goes into cutoff, turned off. No current is flowing through the transistor at that point. Uh, the diode becomes forward biased uh, to prevent for uh, the current through the inductor to change instantaneously. So it provides a path from the, for the inductor current. Um, and basically, the output voltage uh, it's going to uh, remain at the value which, the, you know, the energy is being provided by that LC circuit, which is during the down portion of the clock releasing energy. And so the LC circuit goes through, uh, you know, consecutive portions of the storing and releasing energy. And uh, the whole end result is that the output voltage is going to be uh, proportional to the input voltage. And that proportionality constant is going to be approximately uh, the duty cycle of my clock, which I've labeled D. So I'm going to specify here where D is equal to uh, the duty cycle of the clock signal. Um, the reason why I'm writing an approximation is because there are always some losses through the circuit, but that will be the ideal uh, output voltage value. Next, we're going to see how we can provide a feedback mechanism for the voltage to be regulated. Right now, um, you know, if the output voltage were to increase due to temperature variations in the circuit and so forth, we will have no feedback mechanism to adjust uh, the clock signal for it to change its duty cycle uh, so, that, so that the output voltage is kept constant. And so that's basically what we're going to be adding is some kind of feedback pack feedback path that senses the output voltage, computes an error signal, and adjusts the duty cycle of the clock in order to uh, control or regulate that output voltage. So here we have a back switching regulator configuration where we have added that feedback path from the output in order to control uh, the pulse width, which is our control signal for the circuit. So I have my unregulated power supply. Uh, which is now connected to a uh, resistor 
in series with a Zener diode. That Zener diode is providing the reference voltage, just as was the case in the linear regulator. And RC is there to bias the Zener to make sure that it is on and in the Zener uh, region. Uh, and then there is an, an error circuit, which basically compares the output voltage to the reference voltage across the Zener diode. And so depending on uh, whether the reference voltage uh, or rather the output voltage is higher than or lower than the reference voltage, uh, that error circuit is going to adjust uh, the duty cycle of the clock, which is in this case being generated by a, a pulse width modulator, uh, which basically provides the clock signal for the, ba the base of transistor Q1. Uh, again, we have diode D1 and the LC circuit. Diode D1 will be off or a reverse bias when the duty cycle, when the clock is high, and a forward bias when the clock goes slow. And L and C are going to be in charge of smoothing the output signal to a constant DC output voltage. Uh, if that output voltage should decrease below the reference voltage, then um, the error circuit will increase the duty cycle of the clock so that the output voltage increases and then if the output voltage should increase beyond the reference voltage then the error circuit will uh, control the pulse width modulator so that the duty cycle will decrease so that the voltage comes down so the voltage is kept stable um, at, the, at the constant value equal to the reference voltage in this case uh, and again this is different from linear regulators for one thing notice the transistor is going to be in either saturation or cutoff instead of the linear region. When it is in cutoff, the current uh, through the transistor is zero and therefore there is no power dissipation. When it is in saturation, the voltage um, across the transistor is going to be uh, tend to be lower than in the linear counterpart and so there is going to be uh, less power dissipation even when the transistor is on because of a lower voltage VCE. Uh, in terms of power efficiency, uh, a few little comparison between the ranges for a linear regulator versus a switching regulator and it's all going to depend a little bit on the uh, particulars uh, on the particular design and specifications amount of dropout voltage etc uh, but as a as a general concept the power efficiency for a linear regulator is going to be in the range of um, 40 to 60 percent And for a switching regulator, it's typically going to be in the range of 60 to uh, 95 percent. But switching regulators tend to be noisier and uh, not perform as well in either line regulation or load regulation. So, for example, in terms of line regulation, standard values for a linear regulator would be in the order of 0.02 to uh, 0.05 percent. Whereas in a switching regulator, they will be on the order of 0.05% to 0.1%. And in terms of load regulation, uh, typical ranges for most linear regulators are going to be uh, from 0.02% to 0.1%. And in the case of switching regulators, from 0.1% to 1%. So here's uh, a little comparison. As a final note, just mentioned that both linear and switching regulators also come as independent ICs. And uh, typically, one can look through the data sheet and they will have, uh, in addition to their specifications, also some application notes on how to connect them. Um, power dissipation becomes an issue because these are circuits that are um, going to, to transfer a lot of power and uh, therefore typically they're going to be connected, they're going to have some kind of mechanism to connect a, a heat sink. Um, there is also careful considerations that need to be kept into account for the layout of the circuits uh, and connection of decoupling capacitors uh, close to the circuit and whatnot. And so all that will typically come laid out in a data sheet. Uh, additional features that these circuits will typically include are also overload protection, overcurrent protection, as well as thermal shutdown. Uh, an example of an IC linear regulator would be the LM317. Uh, uh, 
and an example of a switching regulator, a, a step down or back uh, regulator will be the LM2576. And so you can uh, take a look at those data sheets and um, compare specifications of um, line regulation, load regulation, power efficiency, as well as take a look at some of the application notes so that you get an understanding for how the circuits will be connected in a practical situation. Thank you.